Okay, so good evening, Dhanishree. Good Welcome evening, all to this Dhanishree. event, leaders and libraries. Thank you for uh, accepting the invitation. And if you remember, you were one of the early guests who, <laughs> who I spoke Thank with. Thank you so much. Yes, and and we couldn't we couldn't get this done early because of multiple things at your side and my side. But I'm happy that you're here today. And my pleasure. Uh, till now, we have had amazing guests coming in. So good evening to viewers and listeners, and good afternoon, good morning, whichever part of the world all of you are. Um, we have had almost 20 guests coming in on this event and talking about books that has inspired their life. Uh, people from HR, L&D, OD, coaching fraternity, business, uh, managing directors, CEOs. There's a huge plethora of uh, my read leaders that I've had. Yeah, you've had an impressive list of people. Quite, a, quite an interesting uh, list of people. And I was very happy that this is kind of moving uh, from an event to a momentum and a movement, which is what I had envisaged when I started this. Absolutely. So that, that's... Yeah. That's a good thing. So uh, with all that leaders having come in, we have yet another guest today, Dhanashri Thakkar, Vice President, HR, Bharati AXA Life Insurance. Uh, a very cheerful, a very bubbly lady that I met first time uh, uh, when we spoke about this content and the event and she agreed to it. Uh, absolutely somebody who works on helping people reach their full potential. That's what I could gather uh, from what I spoke with her has worked in multiple industries, automobile, retail, BFSI, media, and a certified coach. Also a storyteller is what I got to know. So, and a lot of experience in the space of retail, a lot of experience in the space of insurance sector. So today she leads HR for Bharati AXA, one of the leading life insurance companies in the world. And uh, thank you for coming on board, Dharashi. Thank you very much for having me over. So I lead uh, organization development uh, for Bharati AXA. Uh, my boss would kill me if you said I lead HR, though I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Correction, she needs organization development for, uh, for Bharati AXA and deposit for VP. It's really <laughs> fine, I love being promoted. <laughs> All right, no problem. Anyway, HR only is all the same. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> all right. so, Superb, so yeah. it's lo lovely to have you, Dhanushri. So before we get started into this fantastic book, and thank you for picking this book because I was just wanting somebody to take this as an interesting book. Very, very interesting. It is, book. It is such a beautiful book. Yes. And uh, I have not stopped raving about it. In fact, this book is uh, my Diwali giveaway to a lot of leaders who have uh, influenced me, who I think that they can influence a lot of things in their organization, oh, their life. Beautiful, beautiful. Fantastic giveaway. I think that's a valuable one that people will cherish for a long time. And I'm not going to reveal the book. I'll do it in a while. But before that, let me get started with the first question, Dhanashree. Tell me, how early did your romance with books start? Uh, I think when I, um, much before I started my career in uh, HR, Varesh, mm -hmm. I used to be a voracious reader, uh, one book a week or more. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I started my career with Mahindra and Mahindra. And that time it was a challenge that I would have to be on top of uh, whichever the best books were at that point of time. So uh, in many ways, a kitabi kida. Mm. Uh, I think with age, my ability to uh, uh, read <laughs> has not grown in the same proportion. <laughs> so I'll not give you ideal answers, but I took this, uh, you know, uh, this invite up just so that it forces me to read. <laughs> How sweet, how sweet. Thank you for that. <laughs> so uh, it was almost like I was mentioning to you, I think I, I was more nervous because I was like, okay, is kitab mein mujhe iska jawab nahi aaya, toh main kya karungi? So I wanted you to send me the question paper. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet of you, so sweet of you that actually, in fact, I'm so happy to hear this. Honestly, you know, uh, I had another uh, guest who's going to come next week, uh, who's from Sri Lanka, and see uh, he heads the uh, HR function for a for a for a palm oil conglomerate in Sri Lanka. And he called me all the way and said, "Rajiv, thank you for rekindling the habit of reading. I have not touched book for the last seven eight months. I sat and read this book to come on and see." I said, "This is interesting." <laughs> so, so I, I mean, you know, the book that I chose, uh, I think. Um, Besides reading it, uh, I've listened. I think it was a new habit that I started listening to books as I walk, Audio. as I travel on Audible. So uh, thank you so much. I think that was a new pleasure. habit that I pleasure. sort of got pleasure. used to. Pleasure. 
and please continue doing it. So what I'm going to do is we can keep sharing the books that you have read and I have read that we kind of keep sure. pushing each other. Sure, That's happy to do that. Yeah, super. So with this, with this Kitabi uh, Kida that you spoke about, tell me then, Sri, you must have started with novel, the Nancy Jews and Enid Blyton's of the world and all this stuff, like all of us would have done during those days. You forgot Daniel Steele. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then moved on to some Jeffrey Asher's and Robert Ludlum. Yeah, uh, yeah. Correct. Of the world. correct. Tell me, how did this evolution in you as a reader help you and contribute in your leadership? That's, that's something I would love to hear. I think, um, yes, a lot of books that you mentioned were good in college. And what it did do is, I think books create a world and you get to be a part of that world and much longer than a movie. Yeah. So um, in many ways, I think I've lived and I continue living that part that, uh, you know, the imaginary world. And at the same time, when you read, when you start reading the business of fiction uh, genre, uh, you start forming your thoughts, perspectives. It starts building on that, gives you clarity of thought besides uh, improving your language. So I, I came from a school which, you know, English was not a very, um, uh, you know, frequently spoken sort of a language. Okay. And uh, it did in, impact my confidence when I started off. Mm. And uh, I took up reading primarily at that stage, which is, wow. you know, improve my language, um, give me an edge uh, over others and clarify my, uh, you know, diction, a lot of that. Beautiful. So Beautiful. Uh, look at the way you're talking. It's difficult to believe this part of yours, but thank you so much. Books <laughs> play a very, very significant role in that. that that's, that's really nice. So let's, let's get into a little bit of this book today, which you've picked up. Yes. Quality. Infinite, Infinite Game, Game by, by Simon, Simon Sinek. I know, I know, he's all over. It was a lovely book. What it's I love about over. the book is it's longer, the font's a little smaller, it's very different than the regular size of the book. So I kind of like that bit as well of the book. What oh, made this book, book then, among all? So I, I think uh, I did, I did uh, come across a certain. So Simon Sinek is some someone I am following uh, quite a bit. Mm. Uh, the thoughts are uh, very different than from yeah. his first book. Yeah. If you remember, start with the why video was all over. I know it okay, was. With, uh, the Steve Jobs and Apple example. And I think yeah. at that stage itself, it connected because he elevates your thought process. And a lot of, you know, a um, um, lot of his work, I think it's about start with the why. Hey, everything, you know, everything. So whether in this book, for example, he speaks about having a certain finite and infinite ways of thinking. Mm. And I connected with this, the, all these thoughts, starting with start with the why mm. at a value level yeah. in terms of, you know, a higher order values of wanting to make a difference, thinking beyond one's goals, mm. one's, um, you know, KRAs and a lot right. of that. So I think it elevates the thought and that is what connected me to uh, uh, this particular book. Beautiful. And there was this talk which was, uh, you know, which I came across and my son saw it. And, you know, it was very interesting and which is where I thought that this book seems very, very interesting uh, uh, to work on. It, is, it, so it is. did challenge a lot of my existing thought process and we'll talk about it. Sure, more sure, as we sure, uh, sure. go into and that that way i think simon kind of challenges you in fact start with why for me is one of the the simplest and the most profound concepts ever written by anybody and it, it's is blown off many many people off their feet and the way they think at business the way they think at work or life you know it's so powerful those three golden circles that he talks about in absolutely or whether it's the leaders eat last or this one i think very very profound thinker the age in which he is he, he really able to articulate all that so very, very powerful book. So tell me, let's let's get into this. And you spoke about the infinite and finite mindset. How do you how do you see this concept of infinite mindset and finite mindset? As Simon so I think the way I see it is I don't think I can say it any better than the way um, you know Senec puts across. But I'll give you my interpret interpretation please, of everything. Please. I think if you see um, uh, across whether it's people or whether it's businesses. We are so much conditioned by society to mm. want a specific thing. Mm. Okay, it's you know effort, output, and which is reinforced time and again. Okay, mm. 
someone who wants to work for a much larger cause is you know considered on the philanthropical side or mm. working with um you know at a m- much larger need mm. uh, you know at a very different level and you sort of just classify that is mm. this something which is you're not being practical yeah. that is how we end up correct, seeing correct 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 whereas if you go back and see i think you know all of us as human beings mm. want to connect to something which is larger than us true okay we love hope and mm. you know we love leaders who uh, ignite that sense of hope a sense of purpose yeah so um, uh, i think i like that whole um, you know thing about finite and infinite i was also reflecting back in organizations where i have worked or where i've heard people work wherever i felt that you know this is not just for my role is not limited to this i am contributing mm. towards a much larger cause yeah. i think i connected uh, to that far far more and it didn't stop me from doing something uh, which is you know i think it was volition it was something uh. which ignites um, discretionary effort so and uh, you know uh, that is where i found that you know how finiteness can be quite restrictive Mm. um and you know it it's it sort of it, it's like you know in the hr conversations i'm sure you've said ki bhai kr mein nahi hai tab tak wo banda nahi karega mm. there are people who really want to do things they are not well, limited to material absolutely it's about just doing things for the sake of doing yeah. and uh, an organization's job is to ensure that these characteristics are noticed reinforced true, true. Uh, and you know rewarded enough i know and i always used to keep telling telling my team members look the job description is only a document taki hr ko audit mein double tick mein mark mile to so other than that that job description of no purpose you know what you need to do why you have been recruited go and do it as simple as that but you are very right yeah, very right how many of the leaders really are finitely thinking how many of them are infinitely thinking is a fundamental question I think I think as budding leaders who are listening to you, this makes tremendous sense. Oh. Uh, actually, yeah. what what is the advantage of this infinite thinking? How does it help the leader? Sorry, to, say that again. What is the advantage of having this infinite I mindset? Think, I think when you start looking beyond what is um you know what is what is the reason that you exist and you are not. it's not about the next competition mm. it's not about the next target it is not about yes they are important mm. but they are not uh, they are not complete in whatever they are saying right and that's where it just opens up imagine if i were to tell you you could visit anywhere in the world if mm. you know you have this or i limit your horizon to a specific mm. room or a specific place i think mentally there is a shift there is i agree right so i think it's it, it's a part of that of you know having uh, you know an infinite mindset yeah. and um, yeah. i just love it that it's not restrictive boundaryless limitless correct and it feels so good yeah yeah in fact as i was reading uh, i mean i've read this book earlier but as preparing for this conversation i suddenly realized that we are missing that infinite space before covid right today is very finite i have to walk out with the mask i have to do certain things which i probably had didn't have to do a little restrictive but earlier it was it just open i can go walk around anywhere i can do whatever without any element of fear there's no any thought process behind me but today there is something which is restricting you and it is it is it is not very comforting yeah i mean i just build on i think um, it's made us also question what is important yes absolutely Absolutely. what is important for i mean if you see people have got back to their passions um you know they are finding newer ways of connecting with each other um you know when in during the lockdown they discovered um you know what is of most value uh, we all have come to a new realization of how important health is yeah uh, so a lot of this uh, there is a shift and you know bringing i think ye sab you know i i watch a lot of movies also okay so um, if you see ye jawani hai diwani ranveer singh says yeah, yeah. you know yeah. 25 you know 25 mein naukri 30 mein shaadi 35 mein bachcha mm. it's like who has decided this <laughs> it's like almost totally 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. So in some ways, it's the finiteness from a personal space. So in an organization, also, you know, mm. yeah, to KR. I mean, you know, agar three or four ka performance hai, to bhai tu badiya hai. Okay, uh, promotion mil rahi hai, to tu badiya hai. Whereas uh, I think the infiniteness. Um, you know, just opens up a lot of things, and as yeah. businesses also start looking beyond. I, I mean, so many examples. He gives examples of Apple and Microsoft. Mm. Okay, and uh, I think when leaders operate with, uh, you know, a infinite mindset, you sort of almost welcome competition. True. You almost welcome because it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it will create more innovation. It will create more demand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm also reminded of when I was in McDonald's. So McDonald's mm. used to have stores almost every two blocks away. In mm. penetration was very high in uh, you know different countries, not as much as India. Mm. And if you see, it's just multiplied the entire customer space. Yeah. 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 It's multiplied demands, and there's enough space where everyone can grow. True, true, true. I agree. I agree. So yeah, I mean, it it, it just up. takes away. Correct. If world is enough space if you can create um, you know opportunities exceptions it keeps you on your toes because infinite does not mean lazy infinite does not mean that you know you uh, it definitely is not about complacence it pushes wow. you to keep on your toes keep keep innovating keep giving value keep creating cultures throughout so True, true, true. I think it's so right because everything starts from the head, right? And if you're able to have the mindset, then it'll convert into words, it'll convert into actions. You know, it's so important. True, beautiful. So it, it, it also takes us to the very powerful uh, thought that he talks about, which you also said, you know, it's not about job descriptions and KRA. And he says, it's important for the leaders to make people work for a just cause. Absolutely. Absolutely. That I powerful think... sentence and the meaning of just just changed in that phrase. So how do you interpret that, Dhanushri? And how do you how do you uh, kind of give this to the young leaders who are listening to you? So I think just cause, what I loved what he said is, what is a just cause and what is not a just cause? Okay, I think what is a just cause, it not only appeals the heart and it is not something which is, you know, the typical mission statements of wanting to contribute towards community it's not a csr statement mm. uh, it is definitely not you know being the best in my industry being the best of products it is much much larger larger than that mm. okay i think the examples that he shared um, i mean uh, i would go back to indian leaders um, you know when a lot of what gandhi's thought process is which is yeah. looking beyond a specific uh, objective or specific short term goals mm. okay is is what makes so much sense uh, i loved you know in it's not in this chapter but this company patagonia mm. and uh, there was this example which was shared a case study where patagonia actually had a, a you know advert saying don't buy this jacket because you do not need it mm. And I was intrigued and mm. I went and checked out their, um, you know, Instagram and what are they advertising. Uh, so they are a very high end clothing brand in Europe mm. and uh, they do a lot of, um, you know, uh, different, um, I think, weather condition led uh, wear. Okay. Uh, and I was amazed that a company thinks like this where I think beyond uh, just saying, you know, most of us advertising see that yeah. uh, and just cause makes you feel if I was a part of that company, I think it makes you feel that, look, I'm not just doing this. I'm doing this for a much larger good of mm. the community, mankind. It makes me connect because end of the day, I think when we wake up, we want to do a good job. We want to contribute to something which is uh, larger beyond us. I agree. I agree. And that is such an empowering uh, thought to have. Absolutely. I mean, that, that purpose is the strong why, right? If that drives us from inside. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, 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 we wouldn't be doing because we have to do it. We do it because we love doing it. There's a huge difference in... Yeah. And I mean, I'm happy you pick on the word love because I think love is so much emotional. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, light is, and he says that in the book, which is light is a very cognitive reaction. True. Love is so much emotion. It's like, you know, do he, he, there's this question, do you, do you like your wife or do you love your wife? Right. Okay. And a lot of that. So I think the minute we say I love my job and as HR professionals or anyone who is, you know, a business leader, Mm. You want people to come to work and give your best and love what they do. Because when you love something, you do not think of what are you going to get in return. You just do it because you really, really feel like. Absolutely. I mean, you, you just transcend beyond the elements of time, space, physicality. Absolutely. All that stuff, right? Correct. And a just cause does that. I know, I know. I remember, I remember a couple of people, had, not a couple of people, I've been asked multiple times that Ajay, you've been into the space for so many years, it's what, 20 years now, you design interventions, you deliver workshops, leadership workshops for organization. Are you not sometimes more key, sort of repetitive? I said, no, I don't feel repetitive because the word leadership is so mystical that yes. it, it changes in meaning with every industry, with every audience, with every intervention, with every need that a company has. And yeah. you love it so much. That, you know, that Mihalis, Kins Mihalis flow concept, if you go by the yes, law, absolutely. Market, you know, right. work and fun just merges, right? Then it's just happiness and you love it. Absolutely. And I think in many ways, um, you know, we speak of engagement in so much transitional terms. Okay, which is there is this. So we, I, I uh, particularly have this um, angst somewhere where HR professionals look at engagement in terms of, you know, activities and connects. Yes, they lead to collaboration. As long as that, that linkage is very, very clear, that is where it makes sense. Uh, loving a job is a lot. That is what I would call a truly engaged employee. Is he clear? Does he have the necessary uh, environment to perform a certain way? And, you know, uh, completely give their best. Which is what so an entire job is, right? Yeah, correct. It is. I, I, I love this. I love this when I was working with this uh, uh, Happiest Minds and Organization in Bangalore. Uh, sure. The, the, HR the one which had a bumper IPO. <laughs> so, the <laughs> HR is called Chief Happiness Officer. I mean, from, from IR to a HR, which is happiness today, it's a huge yeah. transition, right? Yeah. The job of an HR or an OD or all of you is to create an environment where Rajiv comes and feels happy and feels engaged to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, you know, the way I see organization development is uh, you enhance capacity and, uh, you know, capacity and capability in the organization. So I do not really limit it to, you know, L&D performance talent. If it is restructuring required for the business, that's a part of OD. You need to envisage a lot of that. So I think coming back to um, just cause, I think reading about it uh, felt so good that you know yeah. you uh, you want to connect to something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So Super. yeah, Super. it was lovely, lovely. So if you take this cause a little ahead, um, Simon also talks about this element of will and resources. Yes, yes, he yeah. does. I think very powerful elements, and they come together and they create a larger magic. Now, Absolutely. from a leadership and your own successful growth as a leader, how do you see these two important coming together, will and resources and in love? So I think resources uh, in very typical terms is everything that I had to do the job. Hmm. So in many ways, I think uh, we end up doing a good job at it in terms of giving everything because what we want is performance. Yeah. What we want end of the day is that output. Hmm. Uh, I feel will on the other hand is very, very emotional, um, you know, which connects and it has so many deeper elements, mm. which is beyond, I mean, it transcends right from the way I create my culture in the organization, Absolutely. to how my managers behave, uh, to, you know, what is required uh, at the workplace. Mm. I think there were these couple of examples where uh, how something which is, um, you know, you may have the resources to the, do the job, but if I'm not uh, inclined, I mean, you know, if I'm not in the right mindset, mm. will I still, is there other resources enough or enough. do I create uh, enough around it? Um, I don't know if it is in this particular chapter, but there was this uh, example of container store. Mm. Okay. The container store or the container yard. 
and uh, interesting case where uh, you know during the recession where <laughs> the, the the demand of people buying uh, stuff to uh, you know their container or storage needs had uh, the demands had gone down significantly and there was this uh, call in terms of should we be laying off people should we mm. be on furlough what is supposed to be done and what the company did instead is uh, they expected employees to understand mm. and they did do furlough which is you know uh, they deferred pay for some time and when they shared it with the employees i think people just came on board and uh, volunteer to do cost cutting volunteer uh, you know to partner with the company and this is not a one time thing i think yeah. it's a sequence of so many things which are created Mm -hmm. uh, throughout okay uh, and i was looking back in the current times it's very similar mm -hmm. to the current times where furloughs layoffs have happened in different uh, companies and I, it was amazing to see you know companies like tata uh, making a statement True. that you know we will not let uh, you know we will not sack any employee yeah uh, i think these were beautiful and to me it's not just resources but how do you ignite this sense of will mm -hmm. throughout which is also about culture so in yeah. the book you know the examples um, sort of flow one into each other and every time it forces you to think uh, beyond in terms of you know where does it lead and what is it that you're creating and you're creating something which is much much long lasting um, and there yeah Absolutely, they're beautifully articulated. You know, such organizations where they are able to get those resources in place, get everything around, and also ignite that will, as you said. I think I like the word ignition there very much. I think I think people would stay engaged, would stay contributing enough uh, to the organization. I think I think your your Tata is a classic example because the statement of Ratan Tata saying these people have worked for us and you can't just throw them off in rainy days. This is going all over viral, right? And and uh, from my experience. From my experience, I'll give you, I think one of the organizations which has made a lasting impact on, on me is McDonald's. And um, I like it that, you know, at McDonald's, there was, um, you, you, it was okay for you to be 10th or 12th pass and you could uh, still be, you know, the head of operations. Nothing mm. could stop you from there. Mm. Okay, because I think the system, the systems in the company gave you all resources uh, and they invested in you. They created the culture in you. So I I felt that you know it's it it was a good balance of uh, getting your sign on. So so beyond mm. a certain point, the attrition was negligible in McDonald's. Yeah. So after the front line, the attrition was negligible, and people stayed on. And I think for me that's an example of how you can really talk of talent management. So as I was reading the book, a lot of these examples kept, kept coming back to me of, you know, how do you create uh, very lasting uh, organizations which are beyond you? True, uh, and true. what can leaders do about it? What can HR do about it? True, true. Did you watch the movie on Netflix on McDonald on Ray Kroc? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, I'm not sure McDonald's would. Uh, I think it's. Uh, see, I think sometimes the leaders we see them as these perfect souls, right? Uh, almost like demigods. They're not demigods. I think they're real people. Human beings, pretty much like. Correct. Us. So I would want to take away the largies of what he, what they did, the thought process that they got in, uh, the larger thought process. Um, you know, of creating an enterprise like that. A magnificent story. You know, that way, even Steve Jobs had his own gray spaces, as the book talks about. Absolutely. Okay, but end of, the day, end of the day, go back to the same thing called what is the just cost? The just cost was still achieved by the organization, right? In such a Correct. short time. True, true, true. And I think, I mean, you know, the book, for example, talks of uh, the payoff. I mean, mm -hmm. when you start investing, giving best of the benefits to your employees, Mm. And, um, um, you know, uh, you sort of pay off by having lesser attrition, mm. uh, less, in, you know, um, ensuring that, you know, employees are vested in your interests. They are bought into the vision which exists in the organization. Now, this, 
i think a finite leader would definitely ask for that you know what is the return i'm getting how is it impacting my cost correct 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 how is it impacting my immediate growth and productivity Mm-hmm. So a lot of these questions is where the finite and infinite keeps coming up, yeah. uh, and in some ways, I think it's a constant journey of reflection of what you because the world will push you to think in a finite way because we are right. wired like that. I agree. And I think it takes phenomenal amount of courage to come back and elevate that thought process. Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay. So um, and I'm not sure. You know, I think. <laughs> if i was speaking to um, let's say any executives who are starting off in the first 10 years of their career hmm. i'm not sure if they can impact at a organizational level but they can definitely make an impact in functional level in their lives in questioning elevating the thought process of you know uh, what is in their circle of influence what is it that they can influence and what is it they can do yeah and I mean, uh, of course as uh, yeah please no no please say Please go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just listening before. I think as CEOs or you know, as you as you rise up uh, to higher and higher levels of uh, decision making, the impact that you have in the organization, it's a very very tight tight rope to not fall into the immediate temptations. Okay, you may have to decide to let go of uh, the money. How do you convince your board? Mm. How do you convince others? who doesn't think you're cuckoo and you know uh, keep uh, i think it's a very tough job it is it is i think that's where this book also beautifully says and i think i think whatever you say then she makes sense because the purpose of this event is to ignite the minds of a lot of young minds and budding budding leaders i think they should pick up this book and start reading it at a very early stage of their career people with 10 years experience 12 years experience i would recommend this book a lot because if they start moving from their infinite mindset sorry finite mindset to an infinite mindset space at an early stage in those small yeah. responsibilities of theirs as they start managing larger organizations larger team larger geographies it will be easier for them to apply that infinite mindset there if they don't do it now it's suddenly going to be so huge that it will look overwhelming on them i think they absolutely should. i think we do each each of the roles we <sighs> need to go back to uh, questioning and in some ways i feel I, i was i you know as i was doing my reflection uh i would go back to this thing that i said which is courage mm. having the courage to have your view uh, to stand by uh, your view and sometimes mm. you know when you start deciding to live a life a certain way uh, you also you also accept what come at was what comes as trade offs with yeah. it a lot what uh, simon senek talks about um, and i relate to it personally is you know leading your life with a lot of authenticity lot of higher level value of community society thinking beyond yourself absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this needs uh, this needs uh, you to th- think differently it's almost like yes. maslow self actualization sort it of needs, a, it needs it needs it needs it needs you know in fact uh, maxwell in his five levels of leadership also talks about this when you reach a stage of production and go beyond and reach a stage of organizational impact you need people who have high level of maturity and i think this high level of True. maturity alone can create this infinite mindset because we go beyond the designation beyond the kursi beyond the cabin beyond the jds beyond ctcs and do something for the organization with it Lovely, lovely. I'm just loving this. It, it also takes me to this next very powerful equation that he talks about, and you spoke about culture multiple times in the yes. last uh, couple of uh, yeah. conversations. Uh, equal to values plus behaviors. Culture yes, is equal to absolutely. values plus behaviors. Correct. How have Correct. you used this in your growth? So, uh, okay, the way I see, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, culture. I keep going back. Uh, Sumatra Ghosh's this definition of culture smell of the place and uh, in many cases when you go into a certain organization you spend mm-hmm. some time there and you get to know what's the culture like what is the smell of the place mm-hmm. um, and in many ways what is also true is whoever is leading the organization mm-hmm. uh, if you were to make out um anything about that individual you should look at his or her department or the organization that they are leading True. because them as a person 
has huge impact on what are they creating so this particular statement which is you know culture is equal to values plus behavior has a lot first to do with the leader having fantastic amount of clarity mm. with what is the a the culture they want to create mm. uh stay away from a lot of personal stereotypes there and that right. takes phenomenal amount of authenticity mm. self awareness to do that and then of course you know what is the values and behavior that they want what will they reward and it's a it's a tough journey because you know when they say mm. walking the talk it's a tough journey mm. i mean so many examples shared in the book about uh, you know the leadership change at ford yeah okay where i think mcnally uh, he was the ceo and uh, he it was interesting where every leader uh used to present everything in green when the organization was not doing well and uh, people behave in the conditions everything is a function of reinforcement sure so if that is what was reinforced that is what exactly the leaders were trying to do and it took i think the book does talk about you know um he questioning it rewarding it when he, uh, you know when it came up and someone presented something being read and it took certain time to come to a stage where people were honest and candid and trusting of each other correct okay. where they could you know be uh, very very transparent of what's yeah. going on yeah. uh, now this one is not easy and you know uh, talking of the different sectors that i've worked in i think we are we keep coming back to a certain finiteness that uh what if people take disadvantage i mean look at this you know um, in the mm. covid situation work from home is a mandate mm. Mm. most leaders will go back and ask you oh, how will they clock in their time how will mm. we know whether they are working or not working correct okay how will we know if you know uh, work from home uh, and which is why work from home before covid has never been very popular in india correct. Uh, there is a lot of back and forth which has gone on that because primarily we were concerned that whether people will do or will people actually uh, you know um, go uh, take a ride and take a free ride. But if you look back at numbers, I think there's a very small percentage who violate yeah. this. Yeah. The last part wants to still do good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I'm just going back that uh, you know this particular case. Mm. uh has a lot to do for hr professionals for uh, anyone who is leading teams mm. in terms of you know um, please watch out for what is it that you're reinforcing back true true as a parent for example you know yeah. when your child comes and asks you for something which is a clarity so uh, are you uh, open to listening how do you respond are you yeah. preoccupied that becomes uh discipline i'm just conscious of time so please i agree i, agree. I understand Absolutely. please stop me i'm quite passionate about no, no, this please, please. don't worry don't worry you 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 leave the clock bit to me don't worry <laughs> all right <laughs> all right but it makes sense it absolutely makes sense because i i like the parent example because uh, in in organizations also this pretty much happens right when when they come to you and as as an hr currently the covid thing that you spoke about makes tremendous sense because you're almost like questioning the integrity of the individual true true uh right I mean, and we don't ask it, but they don't want it to be questioned yeah and we don't want you know and do we my question is then are you going back when it is about working on weekends whether mm. it's stretching are you applying uh, you know are you giving the same standard we are not true and which is what if uh, in many cases it's like you know we want to use it to our convenience in so many ways yeah so yeah and which brings forth so much of finiteness which uh, you know we are conditioned uh, and of course it, it's very see finiteness is also very safe Yeah, yeah, it's comforting. No? Because you know that you you are following a certain societal norm. True, 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 true. So yeah, it's it's in you. You're not looking like a fool, and we hate looking like a fool. Unless there are organizations who really chose to, uh, you know, choose to go beyond this, and you know, uh, like the the CVS example. I think the shareholders 
would uh, uh, serious deciding to exit out of uh, smoking i mean cigarettes as a business i think that was really be really beyond everyone would say okay you're being stupid why don't you phase it out why don't you do x y z but it takes a lot of courage to yes. stand up and you know say this uh, and truly stick to it i agree i agree i agree fantastic it's so, so difficult to build culture man oh god it's, it's quite a work and quite a work and i think that's where this values plus behavior really really is a very powerful equation thank you for bringing that i'm going to i'm going to ask you the the, the last uh, but one question and you talked about something called existential flexibility yes a very very powerful concept absolutely please give clarity <laughs> i think existential <laughs> flexibility um to me in very simple words was right. staying relevant lovely lovely okay it is and i use that at a very deep end when i say stay relevant mm. i think it is about how do you continue to how do you continue to evolve mm. all the time how mm. are you not stuck on to these holy cows correct okay which gave you success as a professional and we love doing that again it is about feeling safe and comfortable and you know senate brings it up in another chapter human beings sort of have this need of feeling safe it's we yeah. hardwired yeah. for a lot of this okay and the minute we say it is okay uh, to come out of that shell i think magic happens yes okay so i think it's two things one as individuals how do we continuously keep evolving mm. staying relevant second mm. is as organizations what is it that we can do so that people evolve uh, continuously and ethical i mean you know existential flexibility we have so many examples right from blackberry to garmin uh, to so many brands which don't exist don't exist today now yeah. so uh, i mean just see in covid time so many organizations sort of you know um are struggling to survive true true and uh, uh, i think it's 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 like this continuous journey and i'm reminded of this also saying from ray croc which is green is growing how mm. do you con- continuously stay green and growing in yeah. whatever way at whichever level and not accept that you know okay I've, reach the highest level of you know wherever i am i know i know this calls for so much of flexibility isn't it whether it is cognitive or emotional or you know any disposition that you need to have it calls for tremendous yeah and today the buzzword in all consulting circles or hr is agility the word agility <laughs> mental agility we love our <laughs> jargon right so uh, so agility is the key word i think uh, a lot of measuring of potential is on agility which brings me up to this concept of which challenged me True. uh from a talent point of view of mm. performance and potential as a matrix which we have been using throughout in hr Mm. generations and uh, it, i was really i mean i think that kept me thinking that potential is actually future performance and we are so conditioned by one organization who set the standard for rest of them to follow which is ge and i love that that you know some someone as high performing team like a navy seal team uses trust and performance as a key true. lever true. that was very very interesting it kept me thinking that i think there is uh, some time where as hr professionals we have to start thinking challenging this existing framework which uh, you know which i I, I completely love that because i'm currently working with a friend of mine and putting the talent management uh, framework for the organization and we kind of went on to the conventional nine box and we said no this is boring let's do something different and what are the one of the learning that i had like you very beautifully said that she is potential is future performance i also read it somewhere somebody said potential is always misconstrued misconstrued as only futuristic it is also the potential of the individual to perform in the current role so there is some element yeah, of, of currentness also in it yeah of course and i mean i think uh, uh, the consulting world will of course tell you that you know what potential is not you will you may not include 
all the performance ratings but when you go back to corporate they will dispute it because see wherever there is limited resources i need to know where i can spend the best true, true. who can i invest in it's again about potential. you know it's a, about potential and a, what will the person give me mm. so a lot of this is hard work for anyone who because a lot of mindsets to be shifted True. uh you know in influencing and uh, to someone reading this book and causing a change in influence thought process a big learning that has come for me uh, as a hr professional over 18 years i think the job of hr mm. is to keep influencing in hindi as they say tab tak uh, you know tab tak hatoda marte raho jab tak chot nahi lage right right it's about hitting the nail enough number of times it's possible that it may not have a immediate impact it may not have next year but it will be there if you continue staying true and that that's where it's it is a culture it's also about the finite and infinite beautiful beautiful because it's it's see finiteness is you know it's not a part of my kra i mm. don't have to do this my job is this i'm paid for this mm. so this is what i do to the best of my abilities mm. if you go back and ask why does this organization exist what mm. is the role that you are for if it is beyond thinking what can what can i do which pushes the organization to think differently sure. i think in our role capacities we bring the infinite thinking right. into it correct 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 oh that's a lovely lovely articulation makes sense thank you so much uh, dhanushree on 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 bringing couple of things from this book the book is far more deeper than what we could do justice in the last 45 50 minutes but i'm going to leave this with one one last question based on whatever you have picked from this book and your own leadership growth what are the two strong practices you would want to advise to the budding leaders so given my current role what i'm trying to do is uh, i'm trying to get as many simple stuff i'm get, trying to get as many people to read this because who i think can impact big change in the current organization there is a transformation journey and uh, uh, everyone who is a part of that i want them to start thinking and you know getting the thought process of why are we doing what we're doing so that's a very simplistic one i'm not going to give you very rosy uh, uh answers here on what okay. i can do second is i think um for me what it did is it connected me with my values that is why i associate so much with this book of authenticity and making a difference mm-hmm. and uh, in some ways this is a mindset that i've adopted which is uh, to, not to stay limited in the organizational role that is assigned to you mm-hmm. if you look beyond that okay the practical element is you start loving what you're doing you're not limited to you know i think the passion quotient just goes up sure. second very practical terms when you talk about potential and growth hmm. every leader looks for people who do much more beyond their role hmm. so it will get noticed it will get noticed it will get recognized uh, it will get lead to your growth whatever that you have and if it doesn't mm. i think you would have grown tremendously as a person and there will be an organization where you will find your niche and space who recognize this absolutely so absolutely fantastic fantastic thank you so much anshi once again for coming on to this event my pleasure i, I thank I, you I, so I, much for your enjoyment and fun talking about <laughs> this book i hope you two all I did. I mean, I'm sure by the, uh, I mean, how much I'm talking, you can see. I can see it. <laughs> Quite <laughs> excited. <laughs> I hope. I mean, you know, I hope Senek comes back and <laughs> says this by the number of books that I'm giving away. <laughs> In fact, you should you should write to Simon on LinkedIn. Try doing that. I will. I will. I I do intend doing that. Yeah, he will respond back. Lovely, fantastic conversation. Right. Look forward to meeting you, uh, Dan Shree. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Pleasure. It was a lovely conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, keep yes. reading. And then let's keep exchanging other books that we absolutely. Can read All right. Pushing each other. Right. Thank you. You have sure. a lovely evening. See you soon. All right. Bye. Bye bye.